Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. Today we're going to be talking about changing or upgrading the control board on your 3018 Pro CNC machine. So let's get stuck in. So just to give you a bit of background on why I'm changing the boards over, anyone who follows me on Instagram knows I've been pushing this little machine pretty hard over the last few weeks running it anything between 8 and 10 hours a day, pretty much every day. Unfortunately I took my eye off the machine for a little while and one of the Z bearings fell out. This caused the spindle to jam and it fried the board so that's now got to be replaced. There are different GRBL boards out there for running your CNC machines and it's worth doing your own research to find out which ones suit you best. The one that's on is a Kronos Maker. The one I'm going to be replacing it with is a Woodpecker 3.4. I'm going to do a side by side comparison shortly and show you the differences between the two boards and why I've picked this one. But before I take this off, it's worth remembering you should earth yourself whenever you're messing with circuit boards just to avoid causing any extra damage. So let's get this one off and do a side by side comparison. Now my board's mounted on the outside of my enclosure and this because I wanted access to all the different buttons without trying to rummage inside. But removing it is exactly the same process. We're going to take all of the cables out under the four bolts and then take the board off. If for any reason you're unsure which cable is which axis as you take them out I'd suggest marking them up with a little pen so you know which one it is when you reassemble it with the new board. So let's get started. So now we have them side by side, we can see a few obvious differences. The first is that the woodpecker comes with a case. The case has two advantages. One, it gives protection for all the various components on the board. And two, it allows you to house a little fan in there. The fan increases air circulation, which keeps the temperature down and lets all the components run more optimal. If we take the case out of the way, we can now compare the actual boards themselves. The next obvious difference is the Kronos Maker has these three large red chips. These are your driver chips and help convert the actual G-code into actions on your CNC machine. In particular, these little black squares are the processors and do a lot of the hard work. The silver pieces on top with the fins are called heat sinks and this allows a lot of the heat from the processor to disperse. One downside to the Kronos Maker is the heat sinks that are supplied are actually bigger than the chips themselves, which does help disperse heat, but if you're not careful, the bits of glue can stick to these tiny components around it and in the slightest knock can damage them. The advantage though to having these as individual chips is they can be replaced if one fails. So for example, if your Z-axis fails, you can just buy a new chip from places like eBay or Amazon and change that one out. Whereas on the woodpecker, if it fails, you have to change the whole board because it's all in one unit. With these driver chips as well on the Kronos Maker, you can buy upgraded versions of them that just process a little bit quicker. So for example, a small upgrade could just be replacing these three chips rather than replacing the whole board. The next obvious thing that we can see is the Kronos Maker has additional ports that the woodpecker doesn't. Now if you're swapping from a woodpecker to a Kronos Maker then that's quite safe because all the ports that are on here are also on the Kronos Maker. But if you have a Kronos Maker and are looking to swap to another board then you need to make sure that they have all of the ports that you need. The main differences are these ports along the side here and which are for the laser. Now my laser has a standard three pin down here, which is also on the woodpecker. But some of them split the power and control into different ways. You just need to make sure that you have the right one for your machine and laser. On the Kronos Maker, you also have this additional power area over here for running a more powerful spindle. There are a lot of common elements between the two boards, such as the ports for the offline controller. These connections down here which are for limit switches and a Z probe and then the various common elements as well such as USB ports, power ports, on and off switch 
and reset buttons. So I know that I can put this woodpecker in place because all of the ports that I use on the Kronos Maker are also on the woodpecker. And that's probably the most important thing when swapping over between two different boards. So let's get the new one in place. So off camera, I just slid this into place and tightened up the T-nuts just because they're a pain to get in position and you don't really want to watch me do that. But with that in place, we can now connect up all of the wires and then move on to testing that everything works. We've got the Z axis, the Y axis, the X axis, the power supply for the spindle that is. These two cables here are for my Z probe and they go into A5. It doesn't matter which way around they are. And I also have two cables left. Now this one is for the laser. The laser is not in use at the moment, so that doesn't need to be connected. And I have this one. This is similar to the port that's used on the fan, and this helps to run the lights and internal fan on my enclosure. Now once we've tested that the board's working, I will connect this up to that port as well and have everything running off one. But for now we're good to make sure this board actually works. So we've roughly got the CNC machine back in position and what we're going to do now is connect it up, make sure everything works and see if it needs any calibration. So we're going to start with the USB cable, we'll turn on the power at the mains and then turn the power on on the board itself. I don't know if you can hear that, the fan's fired up, which is a positive thing because it means power's going to it. The next thing we need to do is to get that to connect to the PC. I don't know if you can see just through the laser screen, we've got UGS open in the background. I'm going to refresh the COM port and see if it will connect. I don't know if you heard that tiny little click then, that typically means the machine's connected. And we're just going to do a simple test of sending it to the left by 10mm. That's moving the X axis this way by 10mm. Right, so you'll notice that went the wrong way. We're just going to try the Y axis as well and send that forward. No, so it looks like all of the axis need to be reversed. That's simple enough in correcting the GRBL settings, but that's something for another time. But for now, I think that probably wraps up what we wanted for this video, and that's making sure the new board is connected and it all works. So after turning the camera off, I did a few more tests just to make sure that everything was in fact reversed. Unfortunately, it is. Up is down, left is right, forwards is backwards. So it means we've got a bit more work to do to calibrate the new board to match the way the old board was running. But we'll save that for another episode. We achieved what we wanted to today, which was to swap out the faulty board with the new board make sure that works and powers up and also go through some of the differences on the boards themselves so if you've got the same need to change your board you know what you're looking for thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it as always give it a thumbs up and subscribe follow me on instagram where you'll get more regular updates at james dean designs and i'll see you on the next episode